like any bowls with this stuff. I don't care how hot it is. So good. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and thanks again for watching. Today we're gonna do one of my favorite soup recipes, all time favorites. It is my cheeseburger soup recipe. It is a cheesy, meaty form of a potato soup. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. This is perfect for a cold, rainy night. The batch that I'm making is going to be a double batch. So if you want to, you can reduce this back down and make it only a regular size batch. But I like to have a lot on hand because this soup gets better as it sits in the fridge and every time you reheat it. So you're gonna to wanna to make this this week. So put these ingredients on your grocery list. The recipe is going to be typed out down below in the description box for you, as well as there'll be links to anything that I use in my video in case you wanna get the supplies that I have in my kitchen. But let's go ahead and get started by chopping up some of our celery and onion. We're gonna start off with about four ribs of celery and I am going to cut off all of the ends, both sides. I did rinse these off already and I really just try to pull from the outside of the celery stalk so I can get some big pieces. And once you have the ends cut off, we are going to go ahead and take our knife and run it down the center of the rib to kind of half it. And then we're going to just chop it up all the way down. And toss it into our bowl and repeat. So you can see that we have these kind of smaller pieces. They're not super big, but they are bite sized and they're gonna cook down really quickly, which is what we want for our celery and our onions. Growing up as a child, my mom did not put celery or onions in the soup. I have heavily modified this since becoming an adult. I find that I really like the flavors and the added vegetables. So I just have about half of a sweet onion here and I am just going to roughly chop it as well. Similar size pieces to the celery so that we can get an even saute once we put them all into the pan. Before we get into the cooking process, I wanna share with you all of the ingredients we're gonna be using today. But first, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can stay notified for when I post new content. Russet potatoes. These have been peeled and chopped into bite-sized pieces. If you have some that are a little bit bigger than this, that's okay. These are gonna be fork tender in the end, so you'll be able to eat them regardless. You can use russet, preferably, or you can use yellow potatoes or golden if you have those on hand. This is about two and a half pounds of potatoes or the recipe calls for eight cups chopped. Julianne carrots. I cheated of these. These are out of the bag. You can find these in the produce section near the mini carrots. This is about two cups of these Julianne carrots. Velveeta cheese. Yes, you heard me correctly. This is Velveeta cheese and this is chopped up. I have just cubed it. It's about 10 ounces of Velveeta and I recommend that you get the full fat version, not the reduced fat. It just tastes better. Bouillon or it's better than bouillon. This is gonna be the liquid, it's better than bouillon. I had this in the fridge. This is half chicken and half beef. You want enough bouillon to satisfy eight cups of liquid or you could use four cups of chicken broth and four cups of beef broth. Trust me, you want the blend, it just makes it better. Butter, I have one stick of unsalted butter here. 
divide it up into six tablespoons and two tablespoons. Two tablespoons is going to be to saute with, and the six tablespoons is going to be to create a roux to help thicken up the soup. Speaking of the roux, here we have a half of a cup of all-purpose flour. This is gonna go into the butter mixture to thicken up to create that roux that we will then add to the soup. A few extra seasonings. So this is a little bit of dried parsley, salt and pepper. You can also use fresh parsley if you'd like, but if you have dried in the pantry, why not save chopping it up and just use the dried stuff. Water, this is eight cups of filtered water that we'll be adding into the soup when we add the bouillon in. If you are using broth, you would not use this amount of liquid, you would just use the broth. Two cups of whole milk. This adds a creaminess to the soup that you really cannot get any other way. I prefer to use whole milk, but if you have reduced fat, you can use that as well. I would not recommend using 1% or skim because it's just not gonna be as rich and creamy as if you were using 2% or whole milk. Last but not least, we have ground beef. I here have two pounds of ground meat. I have a mixture of beef and venison. You could do all beef if you wanted to. You could do all venison. You could even substitute ground turkey here if you'd like. If you do ground turkey, I would recommend that you get the higher fat content ground turkey, so not the 100% chicken breast. You wanna have a mix of breasts and thighs so that you get a better fat ratio. I prefer to use a blend like this because my husband fills our freezer with deer meat and I like to be able to use it somehow, but I like to blend it up to make sure that I get a mix of the flavors and it's not incredibly overpowering of the venison. Okay, let's start cooking. So we're gonna start with a large pot over medium high heat. This is my Calphalon. I think it's a Dutch oven. It's about eight quarts. I've had it for a very long time. So I'm about ready to get another large pot this size. I always make my soups in this pot. I also use this pot for my bone broth. It's super helpful for that because it can hold quite a lot of liquid. I'm just gonna use my little masher here and break up the meat in the pan. There's no need to add any sort of extra oil to the pan because it's going to brown up just fine without it. And then I'm just gonna check and make sure that there's no red pieces. Everything is completely browned. I have a bowl on the side of the stove here and I'm just gonna grab some oven mitts and then carefully, it's gonna be hot, carefully dump this meat into another bowl on the side and reserve that. Now, part of the divided butter we had here, we're gonna take the two tablespoons and put it in here and then you're gonna also add the celery, the onions, as well as the carrots. And there's no need to let the butter melt before you toss in the vegetables. It's gonna melt as you continue to stir and get it all coated. So I just dump it and go and try to make this as easy and quick as possible. So I'm just gonna stir it around. And the goal here is to just have the vegetables get a little crisp tender. We're going to add in some liquid later and they're gonna continue to cook, but we really just wanna take the bite out of it so that it's not super crispy once we add in the liquid. This has been about 10 minutes and I'm just stirring it again to check and make sure it looks good. And like I said earlier, my mom growing up did not put the celery or the onions in this. So if you have picky eaters, you do not have to add celery and onion like I do. I just enjoy it as an adult and I really think it adds a lot of flavor depth to the soup, but you can surely just do the carrots if that's what you'd like to do. And then you'll see I went ahead and added the salt, the pepper, and the dried parsley to just stir this up. I'm going to let the parsley bloom a little bit in this hot pan, just bring it back to life so that it is no longer a dried spice and it tastes like it's more incorporated into the dish. Then I'm gonna add back the ground beef to the container. I have tried before just scooting the ground beef out of the way and doing the vegetables in the same pot without taking it out not worth your time it ends up being a bigger mess you don't get the vegetables cooked like you'd like to and it's just so much easier to just pull the ground beef out and then do the vegetables and then add the ground beef back all right the next step here is to add in either your broth or your bouillon and your liquid i like to use bouillon just because it's easier to have it on hand when i need it again i use the better than bouillon so it does have to stay refrigerated it's not a pantry item but i prefer it because it doesn't have msg in it and i feel like it's just better overall for me 
And so I'm gonna add that here. Again, you want about eight cups, so you need to make sure that you read the package and make sure that you're using the right amount for eight cups of liquid. It just depends on what type you're using as to how much you're going to actually have to add in. Then I'm just dumping the potatoes in. You can see this is filling my pot up pretty quickly. And then I'm gonna add my eight cups of water as well. I'm just gonna vigorously stir this to try to like get it going and get it mixing. And then once it's basically mixed through, I'm going to put the lid on it and we're just gonna bring it to a boil. We wanna get these potatoes nice and soft. It is really a meaty, cheesy potato soup. So we wanna make sure that the potatoes get really cooked and that we've dissolved all of that bouillon that we put in. If you do end up using a bouillon that is a cube, Sometimes what I have done before is kind of heated up my water alongside it and then thrown my bouillon into that. That way when I dump it in, it's kind of already broken up and you don't have any extra bouillon pieces, cubes sitting around. If you do use the cube, you will have to make sure you stir quite a bit to make sure that it gets broken up. Again, we're boiling here. I'm just gonna continuously kind of come by every few minutes, stir it, see if the potatoes look like they're cooked or not put the lid back on, check it again. If you need to, you can just grab a spoon and pull one of these potatoes out, put it on a plate, and then just take that spoon and see if the spoon can go all the way through or a fork that'd be called fork tender. And then you'd know the potatoes were cooked through and you're good to go. So now here we are at the end. These are basically cooked how I want them to. I'm gonna turn the heat to very low, move this off the burner, and then I'm gonna start making the roux. I'm gonna start by adding six tablespoons of butter to this small skillet here and let it melt. You could use any size pan or like saucepan or skillet that you have. I'm just using this small omelet pan because it's what I have clean and available in the kitchen and it works just as fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the butter melt all the way down and then I'm going to add in the half a cup of the all-purpose flour. If you've never made a roux before like this, it's really just to help thicken up the soup so that we don't have a really brothy thin soup. We have more of a creamy and um, a thick stick to your ribs kind of soup. So the goal here is to just cook this a little bit so that that gritty mouthfeel of the flour is no longer recognizable. You don't want your soup to taste like that. So we're just gonna cook it and continue to stir it and let it kind of bubble up on the edges. We're gonna keep stirring this though because we do not want it to burn. So I'm not gonna walk away from this. I'm gonna just keep stirring it, let it get bubbly, stir it again. We're just looking for I would say three to five minutes of bubbles and stirring, bubbles and stirring. Once it looks good and you can really feel like when you stir it, it's really more of a consistency that's all across the board together. It's not separate little pieces of flour. You're going to just pull your other pot back over and dump it straight in. This is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. You can also pull a little bit of the broth out and mix it into the roux if you'd like to. But I find that if you do it very quickly and you stir it vigorously, you don't end up with any sort of clumps or anything extra in the soup and it works marvelously. After that is all mixed in, we're going to add in the Velveeta. And again, you can see that I have this pot on a medium high, kind of a little bit of a boil. And we're just gonna stir this Velveeta in until it is all melted. If you pull the Velveeta out of the fridge as you've started cutting up your celery, your onions, all of your other goodies, then it will melt quickly because it won't be as cold as it was if you wait until this point to pull it out of the fridge. Now you can see the soup has changed a little bit of color. It's a little bit cheesier looking because all the Velveeta is melted completely in the soup. Now I'm going to add the two cups of the whole milk and we're just gonna stir this in as well. This adds a little bit more volume to the soup and kind of thins it out a little bit. But this soup is one of those that once it sits in the fridge, it gets super thick because you have that Velveeta in there. So when I do serve this as leftovers, I like to pull the whole pot out and put it back on the stove and heat it up that way. Now I'm just gonna bowl some up for you guys so you can see what it looks like. This is my absolute favorite soup. I grew up eating a similar version to this and as an adult, I have made it even better. Well, there you have it, a hearty and satisfying 
kid friendly, family approved cheeseburger soup recipe. If you do have fresh parsley, this is the time to use it. I also love to add just a little bit of sour cream to the top. It is my favorite condiment after all. This is my all time favorite soup. It is creamy, chunky, and incredibly satisfying. The sour cream on top cools it off a little bit, allowing me to eat it right away. I hope you guys have enjoyed this recipe. If so, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Have a great day.